I just think that the, the, the part of our first song was just for us this morning. Listen to this. Come, young and old, from every land, men and women, and adding young people of the faith, come those whose joy is morning sun and those weeping through the night. So our good God welcomes us to this special service when we're looking back on God's goodness and looking forward to where he's taking us. So whatever your age, wherever you come from, wherever you're going, whether you feel he's near or far away, welcome, you belong in this family. And we've also sung that Jesus is the Lord of all, but we know that in our day-to-day -day lives often we don't want him to be Lord of all. That can be challenging, that can be very uncomfortable. Instead, we like sheep have gone astray, as the prophet wrote many centuries ago. In John 7, I think this is going to come up on the thing we read. I tell you the truth, I am the gate, says Jesus. I am the gate to the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So we who've gone astray are called back into the Father's presence through the gate, which is Jesus. And his good purpose is to give us life in all its fullness. So let's take a moment to remember where we've gone astray this week and to turn back to him. <laughs> Let's join now together in the confession. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life and Christ our soul. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, Jesus, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Let's take a moment to receive that forgiveness right now for ourselves. Jesus, what a beautiful name, rescued my soul, my stronghold, lifts me from shame, forgiveness, security, power and love, grace that blows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Let's stand to sing. <laughs>
by reading and then bring us our message this morning. <clears throat> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe of the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. And thank you to God. This is indeed the word of the Lord. We pray, Lord, that your word written down a long time ago might be real, alive, and effective for us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know whether um, you've noticed, but it's quite hard to talk about Jesus, isn't it? In the world around us at the moment, it's quite hard to be a community that try really hard to follow Jesus the best way you can. It's quite hard in the world at the moment to speak about justice and peace and love and harmony. It's a tough place to try and follow Jesus at the moment. I love this text because uh, it's fusion with the John text that the Lord Jesus has come to give life in its fullness, that there might be life in its fullness, that we might live as human beings the way we were meant to be, uh, that we might be full in our humanity, but full in the way we're supposed to live, a fullness, or perhaps a better way of putting it is whole, life in its wholeness. And uh, so that's the beginning of our, our gospel that we heard, as Elspeth brought us just a moment, John's words that he noted down, Jesus saying, I've come that those who are looking for life might find it, and might find it in me, and find it in fullness and abundance. So the starting place of all of our chat and talk and worship this morning is the firm foundation that we believe that life in all its fullness and wholeness can be found in Jesus. And there is a part that we play in coming close to him, but he's the one who stands and says, I'm here. The gate, the way through, I'm here. Come to me. And he's the one who kind of meets us much, much, much closer to halfway than we ever hope to uh, find ourselves in. So that's the first part, Jesus' amazing words, the words of Jesus that have transformed the whole world from before to now to ever. And then this piece, a few people who in Jerusalem encountered Jesus, encountered the living Jesus, the dead Jesus, and the resurrected Jesus, and thought, oh, how do we do that? How do we follow this one who gave us incredible words? And so, uh, Acts 2, and just a correction, it was, I put it up Acts 7, uh, John 7 on there, That's a, I need to make a correction, my fault, John 10. And if you ever want to remember it, it's easy, John 10, 10. John 10, 10. I've come that people might have life and have life in foods. John 10, 10. So this is Acts, Acts number 2. Um, and this is called the Acts of the Apostles, and I wondered why, but it's because it's the act, it's what we could call it the actions of the Apostles, the Acts. Is how they live, the Acts of the Apostles, and this is the Fellowship of the Believers, which sounds a little bit like a Lord of the Rings uh, uh, film, doesn't it? But here we are, I just wanted to break it down into a few components to look at it together for ourselves. So firstly, they devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. They committed themselves to being together and worshipping together. And despite how hard it is, particularly for these people in the original time, meeting, often under persecution, uh, but they met together and they committed themselves to break bread, to worship together, to journey together. They kind of belonged to each other, and we'll see more about that in just a moment. But significantly, they committed themselves to the Apostles' teaching. So they committed themselves to learning more about what it is to grow and develop, to be a follower of Jesus. And and what the apostles taught, what those original followers of Jesus taught and showed them and revealed to them, they said, we want to know more about this. 
services of commitment to continuing their journey together. But there's also worship, breaking of bread into prayer. Second piece, people were filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. It's just a good reminder that uh, this isn't just a human club. So there is a 19, the 1901 and 1905 association. We're a 1905 association, which means we're an association which will do worship. 1905 association, through the church, you know what it means we're a community that gather around the reality of the living God who's present amongst us. And when we stop and we listen, we come into contact with the living God. And when we pray to him, stuff happens. We're a 1905 association that believes in the power and the presence of the living God who transforms society. And so it was brilliant. One of my fondest memories looking back over the last year was the Holy Spirit Day. Uh, the Holy Spirit weekend, and, and the number of us who just got together and thought, hmm, Lord, what are you doing? What are you doing amongst us? And my idea to ask for more, more of your presence in my life, more of your presence in me and my heart. Lord, may I know more of you? And he says, yes. So there's, there's, a, there's a sort of wonder, because God's alive and he does stuff. All the believers were together and they held everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. I love our church. One of the reasons that I came here was because of the model of what we live. We don't own our own church building, and this morning you can bear witness to the, the joys of sharing a business uh, building with other people, as there are keys that are locked outside, and somebody put the wrong keys in the wrong key in the wrong letter box after last night, and the chairs haven't been put out. Yeah, there's a joy and there's a reality. I found one of the things I found attractive about this post when I heard about you from Chesterfield in England. You don't have your own church building really, and you're self funded. That's a phenomenal thing. When I go back and I speak to my colleagues in the Church of England in England, where the Church of England just dies, you know, the diocese lash out their cash. Well, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> they, they haven't really got lots of cash. But where, where, where the church as would be the case in the Catholic Church in Lyon, it is, so, it is dis distribute money to churches in order for there to be ministry. We're completely different. We're totally self-funded. We are the church. We get what we pay and pray for. That's amazing. It's an incredible testimony to the rest of the world as to how a community, a small group of people in a small place might build ministry and send ministry into not just our world, but not just our city, but all into the, across the world. It's phenomenal. That's the first bit. The second bit is I would dare to ask more. How can we as a community think about ways that we, if you've got skills in managing buildings or legal French you know, law, or you've got experience in employing people or running a small business, I'd love for us to find out ways that we can support people, particularly people who find it hard to come to France after having run away from other countries because of their faith in Jesus and persecuted elsewhere, but are struggling to assimilate back into French culture. I'd love for us to think entrepreneurially about how we can support people in that, how we can build people up and give them a fresh start and a new life. Whether we can, I don't know, you guys, the, the answer is probably somewhere in this room. If you've got skills in employment law or we need a conversation, but we're looking to put together a financial team that can help share what we've got with other people that they might be blessed and the kingdom of God might be witnessed. Finally, nearly, uh, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. There's this, I love the mixture of public, meeting in public in the temple or in public places or workplaces uh, and together in, in the temple and the home, the temple and the home, private, public, private, public, temple, home, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. Now we know that wasn't the case in Leon in AD 177, the Christians didn't enjoy the favour of all the people, they were martyred. We know that's the case for more Christians now than ever before in the world around us. Christians who are standing up and saying, I'm a follower of Jesus, and it costs them their life. It costs them their livelihood, it costs them their lives. Well, 
there is that sense that when Christians honour God and love their neighbours, there is a flourishing in those places. And whether that be in private, in our homes, or in our neighbourhood, or the small network of people around us, or wider uh, in the nations, where the people of God love God and love their neighbour and welcome his kingdom, there's a flourishing. And then finally, the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. There's a sense that the community just can't help but grow. It's an organic thing. There's, where there's life, there's growth. And there's that sense that, and as we see, we look around in our community, we know that there are people who come and there are people who go. And that's part of the joys of, of, of being a transient population, so to speak. But there's also that sense that we're growing. There's also that sense of growth, where there's life, there's growth. And, uh, and this is what the first Christians encountered. And I am encouraged to see that that's part of our story too. The Lord is adding daily to their number, those who have been saved. And then what a great Bible study is to chat about being saved from what, for what, by what, etc. But there's that sense of being go from not saved into saved, from not life into life. And uh, again, it's our calling to help people into life, a new life, a beginnings, from the peril and the unknown into life and being known and being part of a community of life too. So that's part one, and we'll come to part two in a moment. Very quickly though, the Church of England is talking about three things, and I don't always bang on about how good the Church of England is, as you know, but these are some things that I think are good. The Church of England talks about being simpler, humbler, bolder. In French, uh, plus simple, plus simple, plus audacieux. And I like that. And I think that's good. Really, I'm happy to carry that for our community, that we might live more simply as a community, and we can work out how we, you know, how we work that out in the life of our community. More humble. I love it in France. As a Church of England church, we're guests and we're invited, and uh, we're not we're not the boss. We're just invited to be here. So that changes our our, our mentality to be humble, but also audacious, bold, bold in our declaration of life and the one for whom we follow. And then, oh no, I did skip over too quickly. No, no, there it is. And then there's, so they talk about five marks of mission. What does it look like for a healthy church? And it's those five things. I'm not going to bang on about them, you can read them quickly. Um, but tell, teach, tend, transform, treasure. And uh, I know it's all sort of jargony stuff, but I think they're good little markers for us as we journey through life, and particularly this morning as we think about uh, AGM, what we look like as a community, where we're going. I think these are good little pointers as we seek to pray about the Lord next. So we'll find that we'll ask the Church Council who's been working on this over the next few weeks and months. There you go. It's enough out of me. Can I say a word now? Okay, we're going to move on to our next song, a worship song, and uh, it's a famous one. It's been down my vision. So let's stand.
We're going to continue our worship and uh, join together in our prayers. We pray for ourselves, but also our community. And he's going to lead us in our intercession. So if you'd like to sit or kneel with you. theme verse underlying these prayers which goes back to that reading from John 10 and a bit further on. Christ says, I am the good shepherd and if you think about it, all right, we'll be better than shepherd, last shepherd of our flock, but we've all got the opportunity one way or another to be a shepherd and care for someone else. I particularly pray this morning for looking forward to the life of the church in the coming year. So let us pray. First, for our chaplain Ben, Lord, can you guide him clearly and give him your vision for the work this new year. Pray also for his family, Joe and her work and caring for the family as a whole, Roman and Tobias at school and in their outside activities as well. We look forward to praying for coming as curate and pray that he'll have your word as he takes up his duties in a new place with a new group of people in September. For his wife Beth, Becky and their two children Elliot and Isaac, as they settle in here. Lord, bless them all with strength of heart. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the new church council, for Ruth as church warden, then the other members, Diana, Charlotte, Dan, Peter Hansen, China and our synod representative Alison. We pray, Lord, for them that you would give them the time and skills they need to carry out their duties. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own community that you will build us up, Lord, as one community in you bringing together all our different nationalities, our different churches of origin. Make us one, Lord, and guide us to support and encourage and help each other. Lord, hear us. We pray for our city, that we may look around us out upon the city as a shepherd looks out for his sheep to proclaim the gospel message in all we say and do. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, Help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Lord, hear our prayer. And pause and reflect on the situation in Sudan. Lord, now, yet another war has broken out. And we think of the terrible suffering of the people of Sudan. Those who have no wish to fight or get involved with fighting, who are becoming the victims of other people's search for power, power for its own good, not for the good of those they're supposed to be coming. Lord, we pray, bring peace. There, 
in Sudan for the refugees who can't get out. Lord, have mercy, hear our prayer. And so, as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. So, um, in a sense, that brings an end to our formal time of worship this morning. If you need to go, feel free to go. What I'd like to suggest is, if could we sing Be That On My Vision again, um, we can use that as a moving around song if people need to go. Uh, if it, indeed you like to hear as part of your worship, you can use that song uh, <coughs> to be a time of giving. Feel free to stretch your legs and we'll find each other back here in just a moment at the end of Be That On My Vision. Thank you.
There you go, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Brilliant, let's, uh, let's make a start. Um, I don't want to hold on for too long. Let's bring it in. So, uh, I've kind of addressed it a little bit. I want to just sort of paint some broad brush strokes of where I think we're, uh, where we've been and where we're going. Um, so first of all, I want to say a, a, an enormous thank you to the Church Council, to people who've been volunteering, giving their time, giving their effort, particularly with young people and young people's groups. I want to say a massive thank you to those people who've been part of the counselling service. Um, as you know, there are so many different elements and components of our church life that are sometimes seen and sometimes unseen. But it really, that image of the body of Christ where one person has a gift and a skill and is connected to somebody else who has another gift and a skill, and together they build a body uh, that we call the body of the church, is phenomenal. And I, I want to say a huge thank you to you for what you do in the life of our community. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud and feel privileged to be part of a vibrant, uh, living community in uh, the city centre of Lyon. And um, it cuts both ways. You keep me sharp and hopefully I contribute something useful to your Christian journey too. Um, so I love that uh, dynamic between us. There you go. If you can just lower the sand a little bit, or then I don't have to try and fight against you. Not least because I'm about to say you're doing a good job. Uh, where I think we might go next, what are some of the observations that I'm making about the life of our community? I'm observing that we're becoming quite an important and significant training place for people where they can explore A, their gifts and skills. Life Springs is a great, Life Springs is, I think, is a great example of this where women have been exploring what it is God's calling them to do. Not necessarily standing up at the front of the church, but on Monday morning in the business place or at home, 